part of having no responsibilities means that you have lots of leisure time. So, inevitably, some of this time is spent socialising in pubs. The trio and their accomplices make over 220 pub visits throughout the run of the show. While there are many episodes that do not feature a pub, sometimes, like in several episodes of Series 16, they visit three different pubs in just one episode. In this video, we'll visit most of the over 60 real and fake pubs from the show and look at some of the 20 studio sets. There were seven different studio sets for pub interiors that were not related to a specific pub exterior location. The first one was used in the pilot and the following four episodes with pub interiors. The remaining six were all seen just once each, up to series 11. There were studio sets for the interiors of some real pubs, but the studio set of the interior of the White Horse was the only one that was a faithful recreation of the real location. The interior shots were filmed in front of a live studio audience at BBC Television Centre in London until the early 1990s. This is a very basic studio interior with ugly orange wallpaper and green paintwork. It's used five times in the pilot, series one and series two. Most of the set budget for the pilot seems to have been spent on the chapel interior, the library and the cafe sets. However, it is possible the austere design of this bar is deliberate. It was common for pubs to have a lounge or snug bar with carpets and more comfortable furnishings and a public bar where you would find the dartboard. Early incarnations of the Rover's return in Coronation Street had a public bar frequented by Stan Ogden and Len Fairclough, while Minnie Caldwell, Ina Sharples and Martha Longstaff drank milk stout in the snug. Although this pub is apparently unnamed, it is possibly meant to represent the Red Lion Inn at Jackson Bridge, although the real Red Lion was never used as a location. This is a very authentic looking set, a typical public bar looking a bit dingy and dated with basic furniture. It is noticeable that the only other customers are there as part of the story. There was probably no money for non-essential extras. This set is part of a shabby Scarborough seafront public bar. It's a bit dingy, but typical for the period. This very authentic, slightly grubby public bar does at least have leather upholstered benches. It is populated by a few extras to add to the authenticity. As it's a Christmas episode, there seems a bit more money was being spent on the show. It is another public bar, but a very long, narrow set with lots of windows. This might be meant to represent the interior of the Butcher's Arms, and if you didn't know what it looked like inside, you could be convinced it was a reasonable likeness. This is a more upmarket pub with wood panelling, framed prints of hunting scenes and dainty wall lights. As well as this studio pub setting, the studio set for the White Horse interior is also used in this episode. Although we see the Shakespeare pub exterior for this studio set of a pleasant looking bar, the name of the pub is not seen in the external shots to disguise the fact the exterior is used to represent two different pubs in the same episode. Series 12 was the first series to use a building that was not a public house to substitute for the exterior of a pub. This could have been a cost-saving measure, as there would be no need to compensate a pub for loss of business while using the premises. Just pay the householder for using their garden. A few tables and chairs, some wall signs and a selection of glasses and bottles is all you need to make a garden or frontage look like a pub. Twelve different locations were used for 13 different pubs. This private house is used once for the exterior of a very elaborate and convincing country pub studio interior. This cottage is used as a pub exterior in just one episode. It has a very convincing country pub studio interior. This attractive property serves as the exterior of what must be a very comfortable country pub. But as Ron Moody's character, Lieutenant Commander Willoughby, has already been thrown out, we never get to see inside. This pub is seen in two episodes of Series 19. On the first visit, we see the exterior next to the road and a brief location interior that is sufficiently convincing as a pub, but presumably just the corner of a lounge. 
On the next visit, we see the garden on the other side of the building. While it looks like an isolated country pub, you can very nearly see Barry and Glenda's house from here. There is a real Huntsman Inn used in the show, but this is one of two fake pubs that use the Huntsman name. Clearly this cottage was chosen as it's in a dead end road to avoid causing inconvenience to passing traffic. The interior shots appear to be the real Huntsman Inn. This building is at the same location as the Stanhope Arms to be used in the final episode. There's no studio in Sirius set, all the action takes place outside. This is where the ladies tell Compo he is going to France after all. This is the second fake pub using the Huntsman name, with the same pub signs used for the fake Huntsman pub in Series 20. There is no interior set for this pub exterior. This location is often used as it's in a cul-de-sac. The real Huntsman Inn is also used in this episode, but it's called the Wagoners. This private house is used twice. The first time it's used as an entrance to the real Huntsman Inn to allow Billy, Smiler and Tom to arrive on scooters while avoiding the main road. The second time it's used, it's shown from the opposite direction and in the end credit sequence, just as an exterior, when Smiler goes by dressed as a bride, as a passenger in his car. This exterior, used in an apple a day, is part of the same building used for the farmhouse seen earlier in the same episode. The real pub that was used for the interior was also used for several other episodes. The pub signs are the same ones used in the Series 21 episode, From Here to Paternity. The back gardens of two different homes in Homefirth were used as pub gardens. This is the view from the house that was used in Series 26 and Series 28. This is the view from the home that was used in Series 29. This row of cottages is used as the pub garden and car park of the fake pub. Over 40 real pubs were used in the show. We will review them starting with the least used and in episode order from Series 1. I'm not counting pubs if they just happen to be in the background, but pubs that the characters are seen entering, leaving or drinking in. This 18th century pub, formerly known as the Boot and Shoe Inn, is now a Grade 2 listed building. In 2013 it was refurbished by the new owners and is now a stylish wedding reception venue. The pub exterior made one appearance in the Series 1 episode, Pate and Chips, as a stopping off point when the trio were returning from visiting a stately home. A small studio set was used for the interior with flock wallpaper and mock Tudor beams. Unfortunately, resources differ about the history of the star. The documents I found confirmed there was an inn on the site in the late 1800s. The census of 1901 shows widower James Thellis, aged 50, was a beer house keeper here. At some point, the house was taken over by Seth Seniors of Shepley, who owned many pubs in the area. The current building was built on the site in about 1935. We only see it in the Series 2 episode Northern Flying Circus, which is the final episode featuring Michael Bates as Blameyer. The car park at the side is used several times as they mess around with the motorbike and sidecar. A studio set is used for several interior shots. The Royal Oak was bought by the current owners in 2015. It features in the Series 5 episode, The Flag and Its Snags. The trio visit to find Wallace in the hope he can provide them with some transport. It's then 30 years before we see it again in two episodes of Series 30. Nobody messes with Tony the Throat and variations on a theme of Father's Day, but only seen in the background. Ganton is an ancient village listed as Galmeaton in the Doomsday Book. The Greyhound Hotel was built in the 18th century as a coaching inn. It's between York and Scarborough on what's now the A64. The exterior was used once in the Series 2 episode, The Great Boarding House Bathroom Caper, en route to Scarborough. A studio set was used for the interior. The Duke of Leeds, believed to date back to 1850, is now the Spice Fusion restaurant. 
The trio are seen leaving the pub in a very wide shot from some distance away in the Series 4 episode Green Fingers. For the interior, the same studio set was used that would later be used for the interior of the Swan Melton. The Swan is Melton's oldest surviving inn, established by the Garlic family in the 1730s. The family were local butchers and originally named the pub the Shoulder of Mutton. The name was changed to the Swan Inn between 1803 and 1817, possibly to avoid confusion with the Shoulder of Mutton Inn at Lockwood. The pub exterior was used once for the Series 4 episode The Bandit from Stoke-on-Trent. The episode featured several locations in the immediate area, including the Fish and Chip Shop, now a boutique, and the Midland Bank, now a barber's. A studio set was used for the interior of the Swan, the same interior that had been used for the Duke of Leeds pub in the Series 4 episode, Green Fingers. The inn is marked as the Spotted Cow Inn on 1854 maps of the area. At that time, the innkeeper was William Dyson, known locally as Will O'Nats, meaning William, son of Nathaniel. By the time of the 1871 census, the inn was known as the New Inn, a name that continued to appear on maps until at least the mid-1960s. The pub name was apparently formally changed to Will's O'Nats in the 1970s. However, archive photographs indicate that the inn had Will's O'Nats painted on the gable end of the building since at least 1910, but this is now obscured by the modern sign. The exterior was used in the Series 7 episode Cheering Up Ludovic with a studio set used for the interior. The Shoulder of Mutton Inn was established in 1788. In the 19th century there was a butcher's and slaughterhouse here. The pub is used in the December 1983 special Getting Sam Home in exterior and location interior shots. It's also seen from outside in the Series 9 episode, Edie and the Automobile, when Nora is looking for Wally, but she does not go inside. This building has been a public house for more than 150 years in one form or another, and the Bay Horse is the only survivor from when the hamlet of Haydedge had eight public houses. More recently, it was known as the Algae Arms, but that closed in about 2018, and by 2019, the property had become derelict and was taken over by the current owners, who have renamed it the Beauchore Trout. The exterior and interior were used in the Series 11 episode, Three Men and a Mangle. There was an alehouse called The Tunnel, near to the bridge over the canal at Tunnel End, which served the navvies working on the construction of the canal. By 1850, the inn had been relocated here at Waters Road. It took the name of Three Tunnels when the Canal Tunnel and the first two railway tunnels were completed in 1871. By 1889, the inn had been renamed The Junction, and in 1989, it was given the name of Tunnel End. The inn closed in 2013, and in 2015, a planning application was granted to convert the pub into two houses. The pub exterior was used once in the Series 12 episode, The Last Surviving Maurice Chevalier Impression. This is one of several pubs that Compo was thrown out of. This episode was first broadcast in October 1990, filmed before the name changed to Tunnel End. The Hare and Hounds was built in 1816 and was known locally as The Shifters. When the reservoirs were being built in the 1890s, a large number of navvies used the pub. The Hare and Hounds closed in 2002 and the building has been converted into residential accommodation. It was used in the Series 13 episode, Quick, Quick, Slow, for a brief exterior shot that barely gives any indication it's a real pub. Originally a farmhouse dating back to at least the 17th century, it became a popular beer house in the 1850s and 1860s during the construction of Dale Dyke. It was referred to as the Reservoir Inn around the 1920s but later became known as the Hay Chatter Inn. The pub closed in 2003 and it's now privately owned and called Hay Chatter House. The exterior and interior of the inn was used just once in the series 18 episode according to the prophet Bickerdyke. Although this pub is quite a distance 
from most of the other filming locations, it is quite near to the distinctive rock formations used for other scenes in the episode. This building was the New Rock Public House. It had been previously known as the Swinging Gate and more recently the Entourage. Planning permission was granted in about 2011 to convert the pub into two properties. It appears in the Series 21 episode, From Here to Paternity, when Compo's son arrives not knowing his father has passed away. For the show, the pub was renamed The Feathers. The Shoulder and Mutton existed as early as 1803, when George Dodson was named as the licensee in local records. It became a Grade 2 listed building in July 1985. It's claimed that people have told stories of paranormal activity in the pub. The exterior was used once for the Series 21 episode, I Didn't Know Barry Could Play. There is an inn shown on maps at this location as early as 1892, but there seems to be no other record of its history. Nowadays the pub also has a shop offering baked goods, vegetables and award-winning pork pies and sausages. The exterior was seen in the Series 23 episode, Mervyn Would Be Proud, when Tom persuades Howard to buy a musical jewellery box of Pearl and a cuckoo clock for Marina. The old new inn was built in about 1787 and was an important coaching inn on the Cars Road. It was extensively updated in 1839 in response to competition from the new, new inn that had been built on the road that's now the A62 Manchester Road. The old new inn closed in 2011 and was converted into two houses. Although this pub was only seen in the background of one episode in series 24, it deserves a mention as the side of the building was used as the backyard of Lodge's supermarket in the series 17 episode Glamour of the Uniform and the series 19 episode Tarzan of the Towpath. The earliest record of Wortley is in the pipe rolls of 1165. Sir Thomas Wortley, born in 1440, lived in Wortley Manor. His grandson, Sir Richard Wortley, rebuilt Wortley Hall in 1586. It was rebuilt again in 1800. Further repairs were made during the Victorian period. After the First World War, it was in a semi-derelict condition and was rebuilt again. In 1959, Wortley Hall opened as an educational and holiday centre for the trade union, labour and cooperative movement. For the series 24 episode, The Secret Birthday of Norman Clegg, Clegg has chosen a nice hotel to have a meal with truly. They accidentally invite Marina and are seen having drinks in the hotel's residence lounge. Coincidentally, nearly everyone else is attending a wedding reception at the same venue, so Clegg's efforts to have a quiet birthday are scuppered. The historic Stratford Arms just outside Barnsley dates to at least the early 1700s as it features on an engraving designed by Thomas Baddersley who lived between 1715 and 1750. The inn was extensively refurbished in May 2014. This is another location well away from the normal home of summer wine. It was used just once in the series 27 episode Plenty of Room in the Back in 2006 featuring the final appearances of the drunks Eli Woods and James Casey. The Stanhope Arms Public House was originally the hunting lodge of the Stanhope family. It became the only public house in the hamlet of Dunford Bridge and closed in the early 2000s. It was used as a theatrical and drama training workshop for a short time afterwards but has been a private residence since about 2015. In 2018, local newspapers reported local anger over plans to turn the building into a holiday centre. The Stanhope Arms made one significant appearance as the meeting place for everyone going to Gloria's wedding in the final episode of the show, How Not to Cry at Weddings. The Elephant and Castle Inn dates back to the 18th century. Homeforth suffered several serious floods between 1738 and 1944, so there's an engraved brass plate indicating the height of the 1944 flood. In 2015, the pub had a major refurbishment. The Elephant and Castle features in the show twice, the first time being in the Series 1 episode, Spring Fever, as Nora drags what we assume must be Wally out of the pub. Then in the Series 7 episode, The Frozen Turkey Man, Foggy is chased out by an irate customer. 
It can be seen in the background in many other episodes, and Nora did look in the window in the Series 9 episode Edie and the Automobile when she was looking for Wally. The two occasions we see inside the pub are studio interiors that are not faithful to the real pub. You might notice the pub building gets shorter at some point. The far right-hand end of the frontage, where Nora appears with Wally, has been demolished, although it does seem it was never part of the original building. The Clothier's Arms is another pub that does not seem to have any historical record. It appears twice, the first time being in the Series 2 episode A Quiet Drink. The exterior shots show the pub on the right and the barn to the left. The pub interior and an outdoor courtyard were a non-authentic studio set. Many years later, the real interior is shown in the Series 24 episode, The Lair of the Cat Creature. Nowadays, the exterior is almost unrecognisable from the first appearance. It's been extensively modernised and the barn has been converted into a function suite. Originally called the White Swan, this pub was built around 1838. At that time, the road was called Pinfold Lane, later changed to Station Road. By about 1850, it was being referred to as the Swan Inn. It closed in 2019 and has been redeveloped into commercial units. It was seen in two of the Christmas episodes. However, in a leg up for Christmas, one scene shows an exterior shot of a pub called the Pennine Inn, while the interior shots are the Swan. I've not been able to find out much about the Fox House. It was originally called the Traveller's Inn and then the Traveller's Rest. It appeared twice in the show. The first time, the interior and the exterior were used in the Series 12 episode, That's Not Captain Zero. And then it's almost unrecognisable in the end titles of the Series 26 episode, The McDonough's of Jameson Street. The White House ceased trading as a pub in 2012. A planning application was approved in 2014 for it to be converted into several homes. It was used in two episodes in Series 28, but it was called Fox and Duck in the show. For the episode in which Howard gets double booked, the exterior and interior were used. There is a fake pub name sign over the front porch, and in Elegy for Small Creature and Clandestine Track Bike, there's a chalkboard sign showing the name Fox and Duck. The upper story of the building is never seen in the show, avoiding showing the real name prominently painted on the building. The Clothier's Arms was established in 1822 by Jonas Mallinson, who was apparently a clothier, hence the pub's name. It played a prominent role in the village, not only as an inn and an eating establishment, but also as a meeting place for local clubs and organisations. The pub exterior featured in two episodes in Series 4 and 5. In another two occasions in Series 5, just a studio interior was used. It was last seen in the Series 18 episode, according to the Prophet Bickerdyke, in a blink and you'll miss it moment. Owen Bulmer acquired the property and opened the Shakespeare in 1868. In 1900, the Shakespeare was sold to Joshua Tetley and Son, who demolished the old property and built the present pub. It has an unusual mansard type roof. The new building is reported to be haunted. Technically, the pub made four appearances, but in three episodes. It was first seen at night in the December 1988 special Crumbs. Then in the Series 11 episode, Happy Anniversary Goff and Jesse, the exterior was used to represent two different pubs by a very basic change of signage outside. One version featuring the real interior, the other a studio interior. The last time it's seen is in the Series 25 episode Jurassic No Parking with Barry's Dinosaur parked outside. The Rose and Crown dates to 1832 when the first licensee was James Shaw. His family occupied the property for almost a hundred years. It's one of the highest elevation public houses in Yorkshire. The current landlord discovered the pub in about 2012 when there was a possibility of it closing forever. However, it is currently up for sale. The exterior and interior are used in The Man Who Nearly Knew Pavarotti when Wesley tows a piano here on a trailer and again in the Series 16 episode Adopted by a Stray. The final time is in the Series 22 episode The Missing Bus of Mrs Avery. Unfortunately, I've not found any information about the history of the Swan, which closed in about 2009. 
The pub interior is used in two episodes of series 16, then again in the series 21 episode, Surprise at Throttle Nest, when Clegg reads the letter from now deceased Compo, asking him to take his ferrets to Reggie Unsworth. The Crossroads Inn changed name to Tosser Coin in about 2013, when new owners took over. It's changed hands again since then, but the new landlord passed away in October 2021, and the pub has since closed. The pub was used four times. In the series 16 episode, once in a moonlit junkyard, Babs is drinking a pint outside, and in the most powerful eyeballs in West Yorkshire, it features in the end credits. In the series 21 episode, Surprise at Throttle Nest, Wesley stops here to ask directions to Reggie Unsworth's farm. The only time we see inside is in the series 25 episode, Spores. The railway inn opened in 1865 and in 1905 William Dodson Holroyd sold it to Joshua Tetley and Son for £2,700. It is supposed to be haunted. A resident in a flat over the pub claimed it was very active when I lived there, always had the feeling I wasn't alone. The first of its five appearances was in the series 19 episode Truly and the Whole Truth and the last time was in the series 28 episode in which Howard gets double booked where Howard was trying to treat Pearl and Marina to dinner at the same time in different pubs. The Shoulder of Mutton closed in January 2017 and planning applications were agreed to allow five houses to be built on the site of the pub car park. Now the only evidence of the pub's name is the bus stop, which is still known as the Shoulder of Mutton bus stop. The pub featured in five episodes of series 28 and 29, broadcast in 2007 and 2008. The first time was in the Crowcroft Challenge, when the drunk who has stolen the PC's police car encounters Alvin and Howard in crow costumes for the second time. The last time it is seen is in Get Out of That Then, when Lenny Jolly comes to perform his escapology act. The carriage house on Manchester Road was once a transport cafe. During the early 1970s it was licensed as a public house under the name The Eagle's Nest. After being empty for two years, the property was refurbished in 2019 and is now called Horizon House. It's available for hire as a private party venue. It was used six times. The first appearance was in the Series 9 episode, When You Take a Bite, Yorkshire Tastes Terrible. A studio interior was used depicting a very traditional pub and the rear entrance and car park were seen. Later appearances used the front entrance and the real interior. It was modernised and was last seen in the series 30 episode, Some Adventures of the Inventor of the Mother Stitch. The Huntsman Inn is walking distance from the Peak District National Park. It made six appearances in Summer Wine, from series 21 in 2000 to series 24 in 2003. It appeared in several guises in the series 21 episode, Wagoners Roll, it was called The Wagoners, while a fake pub seen in the same episode was called the Huntsman. In other episodes it was not referred to by name but might have looked like different locations due to using different parts of the interior. The full view of the building exterior was never seen on screen. In the series 23 episode, a brief excursion in the fast lane, an entirely different building was used as one of the entrances to the pub. This was to allow several of the characters to arrive on scooters as the real pub is on a busy main road. This would have been impractical so the front of a random private house was made to look like a pub entrance. Previously known as the Eastfield Arms, the Monkey Inn was an ideal filming location. Its isolated position meant that the crew would not have to worry about inconveniencing any neighbours. However, it is well away from most of the usual filming locations. The landlord became good friends with the cast and crew. However, sadly, they both passed away. Their son inherited the pub, but decided to sell up and move to Cornwall in 2015. It was used 11 times. The first time was in the series 24 episode in which Gavin Hinchcliffe loses the Gulf Stream, broadcast in 2003. Its last appearance was in the series 27 episode, Who's That Talking to Lenny, broadcast in 2006. Planning permission was granted in 2015 for the monkey to be demolished for the development of four homes. In July 2018, fire engines were caught without a fire in the net derelict pub. However, there appeared to be no external damage. The story today, however, has moved on a bit. 
Sadly, early in 2022, the bulldozers arrived and the plans for building houses on what was once the monkey is due to go ahead soon. The second most used publication in Summer Wine is The Butcher's Arms in Hepworth, featuring in 31 episodes. The pub was built in the early 1800s and the 1881 census shows that the innkeeper was butcher and farmer Charles Brook, aged 54. As the population increased, the neighbouring house was bought, doubling the size of the pub. It first appeared in December 1981, special whoops as a nighttime exterior with a non-authentic studio interior. The first time the real interior was seen for the series 12 episode Return of the Warrior, broadcast in 1990. The Butcher's Arms was most often used for exterior shots and the interior was occasionally used as a substitute for the interior of other pubs as various parts of the pub could look suitably different on screen. The pub closed in about 2017 and the building started to deteriorate so it was put up for sale. By December 2019 it had been refurbished and reopened. Probably the pub most often associated with Last of Summer Wine is the White Horse at Jackson Bridge. That's no real surprise as it's the pub most often featured in the show. The earliest known record of the pub appears to be from the Yorkshire Gazette dated the 31st of August 1833 where it was reported that John Brook of Bank House had been assaulted and killed at the inn by Jonathan Woodcock. More recent developments have been less bloody. It's now a welcoming pub restaurant with guest rooms as well as being a much visited tourist location. The White Horse pub appears in a resin diorama made by Danbury Mint, showing Edie and the ladies in her car and coming towards them are Compo, Clegg and Foggy on the trolley with the armchair from the series 13 episode Give Us a Lift. The White Horse appeared in 61 episodes, 52 times as an exterior or interior location and a further 9 times in a replica studio set in two different styles of decor. Even excluding the studio appearances, the location was still the most used public house in the show. The first four summer wine appearances were the studio replica interior in 1984's special The Loxley Lozenge and three episodes of series 8. Then there were nighttime exteriors in another Series 8 episode and the 1986 special Uncle of the Bride. The first location interior was shot for the Series 9 episode Jaws. The last time the interior appeared on screen was for the Series 24 episode All of the Flurry and the last time the exterior was used was for the Series 26 episode Watching the Clock broadcast in March 2005. Although various actors played the landlord and landlady of the White Horse, Ron Backhouse, the real-life landlord, was credited as appearing in 10 episodes between 1995 and 2001. In 2009, Ron and his wife Ruth left her on a market stall at Huddersfield Market and the lease of the pub was offered for sale. Ron Backhouse died on the 1st of November 2018, aged 77.